Thank you very much. Thank you. Good morning. So maybe I start with a little overview how I came into this and um, so how I came into producing playfields and into the pinball hobby at all. So we had pinballs since I was a small child. Um, I was always fascinated by pinball machines. And in 2001, I started to shop out pinball machines. So I basically bought bo old used games and completely shopped them out to the highest conditions, or like um, galvanizing all the metal parts and restoring play fields, clear coating play fields, all the stuff. So somewhere in 2006, I got in touch with Wayne, and so the opportunity came up to do reproduction play fields. At this time, um, I was thinking about Attack from Mars, because this was a high sought after title, and nobody had anything for it. So I started with redoing Attack from Mars artwork and bought my first uh, CNC router. So this was a little bit uh, easy machine. We still have that as a backup machine, but uh, it's one of the ones which we don't use very often. So this router had the capacity to cut two play fields on the uh, workspace. So basically, it did not have a tool changing unit. And after the first production round, uh, we found out that's simply not worth to do any play fields with changing the tools manually because you have a lot of time what you need to do one after the next of the tools. So first thing I did, I constructed a tool changer for this machine and implemented it in the software. And so this tool changer can do 20 tools, which is very much for a machine like this. After that, we came to the problem that the inserts take a lot of time to glue in by hand. And it's really a pain in the ass if you want to put on the glue in the exact amount without any drips or any too much or too less glue. And the glue we use is a very specific glue which is not moving or the, is, um, it keeps the inserts away from moving, uh, which is a completely different system than anybody else uses because they always have the moving inserts which usually co uh, um, causes the ghosting. In this case, the glue has to be applied by hand and it takes a lot of time and it's not very accurate. So I came up with constructing a robot for that. So I bought an industrial robot and constructed a tool. So I'm very sorry that I can't show any pictures because we have several secrets in the company and I cannot show these. So th there will be no videos or pictures of the production be shown. So this robot um, has a work hat where we can put on eight inserts same time and the new one has 16. So this, uh, this hat will be loaded as a ma at a magazine or a tray and then the robot applies the glue and puts in the inserts full automatic. So this was the start in a, in a smaller facility and um, it didn't take long that we needed more space because I've al also added uh, an injection molding machine so I have my own tools and my own injection molding machine so I can do any inserts any time. And it's very important that we can do new styles or anything else in a short lead time so I can cut my own molding dies for inserts and just run them in a small run. I could even run five or 10 pieces if necessary. Usually I have a big stock of different inserts so I can just grab them out of the storage. So after we came into doing play fields for Jersey Jack, uh, the one robot soon came to the point that one robot isn't enough because the capacity of one robot is only 25 play fields per day. This is at the end of the line if you feed several manufacturers. So we soon bought a second machine and uh, so these two machines are gluing inserts right now so we have two big robots gluing the inserts and I have a third small one in the middle of these two with a vision system so these inserts are feeded in a bulk on a, on a feeder 
as a mix. So this vision system identifies color and shape of the insert and feeds the other two with the right inserts what they need in this time. So this is a full automatic cell and no employees are working on this one. So this, the, uh, the robot has the ability to change the play fields themselves. So once the play field is done, puts it aside, take the next one, start from, uh, from the beginning and the small one feeds them with the inserts. So the only thing somebody has to do is to refill the insert bulb. So after that, um, we have some routers and um, so we have the, the biggest one can do four play fields at the same time. Um, so we have a big capacity to run bulk play fields or individual ones. So if we come to um, own designs, it's possible to run individual play fields of even a single run. So whatever you want to do, it's no problem to do a single play field with your own design and we could run one or two or three pieces and digital print them. There's no sense for screen printing because the screen printing is too expensive. So um, when we come to the machines, we use a sanding machine, which is a very sensitive white belt sander. So this machine can do in between coats sanding, full automatic. So I have the print and the clear coat on top and we run it through the sander and level it and then we have an absolutely level play field. So when we come to codes, the, our all, whole system is custom made. So there are a lot of discussions going on what code and what quality and dimpling and all this stuff. So I'm very aware of that and uh, we continuously develop the materials. So over the years since we started, there's a lot of improvement in the ma material and in the process. So the codes are developed more and more to a very high resistant and very scratch resistant clear code. So all codes we use, they are not available on the free market. They are made for us and we develop the mixture. So what anybody else can use is not the same what we do. And especially the final clear code, which is the most important one, uh, is a very secret uh, mixture because it contains lot of stuff to make the surface smooth and uh, very durable against ball wear. So when we come to the clear coating, we have another fourth robot doing the clear coats. So this machine runs full automatic in a uh, closed room and uh, so we avoid getting dust in there. And uh, so the mixture of the coats is done right in front of the nozzle. So there's always fresh coat mixed. There's a uh, monitored pumping system which makes sure that the clear coat has always the right mixture. So there's no chance that the clear coat is not mixed very well or something else can happen. And so we get the fresh clear coat always in time when we have the play fit on the painting booth. So there's, there's a big tray and the robot takes them one after the next, full automatic. And after they are cured, they get out and will be ready to go. Usually, uh, it is possible to send or pack the, pe uh, the play field after two or three days uh, after the clear coat is applied. We have a special curing system so that this is cured pretty well and fast. And once you get the play field at home, it's ready to install. The clear coat is not end hard, so there will be still some little shrinking and little movement in the surface, but it's ready to install and uh, can be assembled. Usually it takes several days or weeks anyway to install the play fields. And uh, so in that time, the play field will be cured completely and it's ready to play. And this does not affect any dimpling or something. So as soon as we send out the play field, it's ready to install. Okay, so let's see what I forgot about that. Um, so it's very important that the quality of the clear code is always the same and the clear coat itself is the major effect. So if you have the comparison between who is doing what and how many layers of clear coats, so basically it does not matter how many layers of clear coats you have. It's more important that how many solvent you have in the clear coat and what quality of the clear coat you have. So usually 
I can do a clear coat where I have 85% solvent, so 85% of the material I spray on just goes away. And I could have a clear coat which has, let's say, only 40% solvent, and then we have way thicker surface. So the, le uh, the amount of coats is not very important because I can do the same thickness in one coat with a specific clear coat where other clear coats made my, uh, might need like eight or 10 coats. So it's very important to compare the type of clear coat or at least um, how it looks like. So we try to have the surface like a mirror, which we get pretty good like um, after doing several layers of coats and we, I, I just do how ma however, uh, how many are needed. So they, they are very nice. Um, so there has been a discussion going on very often about the colors. So for the PMS color system, everybody has to know the PMS colors from the 90s or even from five years ago are not necessarily the same numbers we have today. So let's say we have a PMS 340 from 1990. It can be some kind uh, completely off today. So if we compare it with the today 1990, uh, the, the clear code of the, the, the PMS color of the 1990 and the today one, it can be like a light green compared to a dark green. So if somebody is talking about the PMS colors, we have to get the right PM PMS color uh, of this year, and it's very difficult to get the right mixture with the modern inks. So we use a system electronically supported which measures the color and tells the right mixture. And usually this mix matches 100%, otherwise we can adjust it. And if there's some little movement, which we can't tell is this like this or a little bit more red or a little bit more green or whatever, um, I do it like what I would like so that the mix is very nice and we have a good overall combina combination between the, col uh, between the colors. So due to the process with the robots and um, a very high-end printing, no matter if it's digital or screen print. So we have both equipments. We have a, we just bought uh, in February the state-of-the-art digital printer. So this machine can do whatever. And we can print on play fields, on glass, on polycarbonate, on Lexan, on whatever. Uh, plexiglass, uh, PETG, so whatever is possible what is ever available on the market can be printed. And uh, so we have some examples coming up. Uh, I will come to this new stuff later. Um, so basically we don't have different quality levels. So if they are not okay, I will not sell the playfield. So there will not be a, a B or C or D playfield level going in the market from my end. So if there's a playfield like there's something happened, maybe we have a router missing steps or something, I will destroy it and sell it as decoration. So these will not go on the market as a play field which is ready to install. So if somebody is looking for a decoration for wall art, um, I might have something, uh, it's very rare for the reproduction play fields, but we usually have them from production. So we do can continuously develop the materials and the process. The last improvement was like six weeks ago when we changed something on the codes, but nobody will notice that because it's uh, only a small improvement. Um, with the current system, we have been able to avoid the shipping nearly completely, and uh, the dimpling has been reduced very, very strong. So there's only very less dimpling. Um, so this is the material or the, the process of the playfield itself. So um, out of the possibilities uh, we have with the machines, um, I came up with the idea of the red cals. So basically let's start with the red cal, what is it? We have some red cals, like here. This is a, a plastic which is, which is reverse printed and then laminated with, uh, with a very strong adhesive. So this is like 0 0.8 millimeters thick and high gloss. So the finish is like a clear coated cabinet and the preparation is much easier than for normal vinyl decal. 
So due to the thickness of this material, we don't have to take off the old decal and, and it's not necessary to completely sand over all the stuff. So it's much easier to install. Even the side rails do not have to go off because the si this material stops here where the side rail starts. So what you want to do is to paint around all the corners so that you don't see any area of the old cabinet, like maybe a black paint or for funhouse, maybe the blue one or depending on the cabinet. So installation is pretty easy. Just peel it off and position it with the cut it out areas and just stick it on. I did not drill the holes for the um, play field or for the back box um, lock screws. So these have to be done at the cabinet itself because the Williams cabinets had a huge tolerance. So I checked it with the cabinets I have at home and there's about a quarter of an inch tolerance in the length. So that's very difficult to match the right size. Um, what I did is that I kept the space from the back so that it's matching in the front and we might have a little gap on, the s on some cabinets in the back side where it is not visible anyway. So I did do the cutout for the legs. They come with uh, a steel leg protector set so that the legs do not touch the decal itself. Um, the same system is used on the Jersey Jack premium games uh, for a longer time, so these decals uh, are coming from us and um, they, they use the system for several years and they are working very well. So far we didn't have the chance to put them on the market for Williams Bali games because there are so many different uh, types of, of uh, cabinets out. So basically all of different shapes like fishtails or funhouse, they all need different routing patterns and um, so we have to individually route these on a, on a CNC router. So they can be cut with the scissors if they don't fit but it's easier for the machine to cut it and then it's a smooth surface. So that once they are applied, it takes about 24 hours till they have the full strength of the glue. And once the strength is reached, you will not be able to take it off. This is a very, very high uh, durable resist and um, water resistant adhesive. So as this is very new and um, I have done them just two weeks ago, I don't have any install videos so far. When I return home, I will do a video and put that on YouTube or on my website so that everybody can see how it is actually installed and how that works and how it looks like. So um, in the vendor hall, there's a dialed in which has red cows on. So if somebody would like to know how it looks like, this is a good example. A dialed in collector's edition. Yeah, it's in the Wender Hall. Um, so the titles I have so far is Medieval, uh, Attack from Mars. They would fit for the um, MMR or a Attack from Mars re uh, rerun games as well. So the Cactus Canyon is one, Seed of Magic, Bride of Pinbot, Funhouse, Whitewater, and Fishtails. Attack from uh, um, uh, Adam's family is already in progress, so the artwork is being prepared right now. There will be two versions, uh, ac actually probably four versions. So there will be the regular blue version and the gold version. There will be a gold glitter version and probably a blue glitter version coming as well. So like the same style we have on the Adam's family gold glitter version on the playfield. So when these has to be cleaned, um, you cannot use a paper towel because this might scratch the surface. So some kind of a microfiber towel would be pretty good. So are there any questions so far? Or do we do the questions later? Just ask if there's something. So beside these red curls, we have another new product. These are unbreakable plastics. So they are made on a special material which you simply can't break. Everybody knows how difficult it is to install a plastic and then you put in the screw and put it tight and as soon as you put it too tight, the plastic breaks. So I can show here, this plastic does not break. It can be banded, it's very durable. I can bend it back and it still does not break. And even on this small area here, it does not break into two pieces. And this bigger one is very hard 
and they're very tough to bend. So this does not break. So you do not need any defender washers anymore or any defending plastics or whatever. So I do have it for Banzai Run and Joust so far. Um, we have the Banzai Run playfields ready for the show, so I have them uh, just presented. And um, so I do have the whole set for Banzai Run with the plastic set and the back glass as well as the both playfields. So they are available right away. Same for Joust. Uh, unfortunately, FedEx lost the package with the aprons, so the aprons are not here. I would have to show them uh, different uh, on, a, on a, a video or on a photo when I return home. Hopefully they find the package, I don't know. Um, so when we come to these plastics, it is not possible to scratch off this ink. So whatever you use, you can use a screwdriver, you will destroy the ink somewhere, but you cannot separate it from the plastic. So the issue uh, there was before was like when you peel off the protective film after laser cutting, you damage the plastic very, very easily. So this will not happen on these plastics and they are very, very durable. So the UV resistance of this ink to sunlight is supposed to be like six years and with the plastic on top of it, it's probably more. So if you have it in a basement or in at home, it will never be fading or something. If you have them outside in the sun, probably the red would be the first one which will fail, but everybody knows how the colors fade over the years. But with the modern inks, it's completely different than before. Um, so we do have the Joust plastic set with the Joust playfield as a bundle package. Um, so there was a lot of discussion going on about the Joust. Um, so I would like to lose two words about it, how this came to Joust. Um, I didn't want to run Joust, but I have had several people asking me at the Texas Pinball Show earlier this year, can you do Joust? So first reaction from my end was, well, no, I don't want to because I have to bend the playfield and it's difficult to ship and I don't want to hesitate with that. So when I came home, I did the test with the, some old playfields and just cut it them in the middle and see if I could bend them. And this was easier than I thought. And so basically we ended up doing them because we had the access to original screen films. And uh, so it didn't take me long to, to generate them. But the issue was same time uh, I, I got in touch with some, uh, someone who had uh, an OS play field. And so there was some talk back and forth and somehow CPR noticed that we would like to do the joust and they moved it out of their boutique zone in production. And uh, so we had the situation that I have already started production in the background. I do not announce what I'm doing first. So that's why there might be a mix match or what, whatever, I don't know. So the idea was that I run them and then they jumped on the train and did them even if they had them in their boutique zone for a while. So I'm very sorry that there's a mix uh, uh, of these different manufacturers doing single play fields, but at the end, it's, it doesn't matter. So I will not care what is doing by, uh, done by them or not. I will always do my own projects and will do whatever play fields are needed. So if somebody asks me to do Joust, then I will do Joust. Same with other titles, and uh, it doesn't matter if they are done or if they are doing for by somebody else at this time, as long as the license is available. So right now the Buddy Williams licenses are free and I can do any title. Um, beside the Buddy Williams licenses, I have the Gottlieb licenses for several titles. So recently Black Hole and Haunted House have been finished. The license for Stargate cleared. Uh, so Stargate will go in production shortly. Same with Spirit. They are already prepared. And um, I will have wi uh, Whirlwind and Creature from the Black Lagoon available shortly when I return home. Uh, there was only a little missing, so I would almost have them here. But the time was too short. Um, oh, something is here what I missed. So the, the back glasses and the plastic sets are printed with the same colors we use for the play fields. So that means the colors will match exactly. There is no difference, even not a single little bit of a difference between the colors. 
So if you have the plastic set and the play field from our end, it will be the exact match. And this is something we didn't even see on the original factory play kits. Um, so maybe for the, for the joust, we have a package deal of the plastic set and the play field for $1,350 shipped. And for Banzai Run, we have a package deal with the playfield set, both playfields, the complete plastic set for 1200 and if we add the back glass for $1,400 shipped. Just for, for that information. But all these prices can be found in my stores. I, I do have a pin site store uh, where we have listed most of the stuff. I didn't take pictures of the new stuff so far, only of the playfields before I packed them. There simply wasn't enough time. So. Um, the, the Banzai Run playfields, for example, shipped on Monday, and uh, it was a very tight schedule. So last Monday, not, la not a week before. Uh, so when we come to the doing which playfields are coming or what would you like to do, I do have the deal. If somebody has a playfield I could use as a master, um, you will get a free new one if I get the other one, if it's in the shape what we need, depending on if we if we have the screens or not, the artwork has to be good or not. So basically I need a play fit for the CAD file and sometimes for the artwork. So I don't know which titles are most wanted. Um, I do have the capacities to do one probably every two weeks, a new title. Depends a little bit on the main production, but there's a, a lot of room for new titles coming up. So if there's demand for something specific and you have a play field we could use as a master, then just don't hesitate to contact me. We don't have a real minimum production run size. So even if we go to screen printing, um, as I can store the screens and reuse them, um, we have the possibility to do like five or 10 pieces. So even if there's only demand for like five pieces of a new title, I would run it. There is room for custom changes if we go to a digital version. So if somebody wants to replace a color or add a color or whatever, add glitter. Glitter is an effect I would like to use on more games. So I, I guess I will do something on uh, Arabian Nights shortly with gold. Maybe something else on, on other titles, I don't know. So uh, if somebody has an idea, just contact me and we can do something specific. So there are different possibilities of glitter. It doesn't have to be gold, it can be any, any color. There are glitter particles in any color available. Uh, so if we come to minimum production size, we have the chance to do very small individual projects. So if somebody is uh, doing their own machine or own design, I can supply the whole package with plastics, playfields, cabinet art, back glasses, whatever. So I basically need a CAD file and a printable file for the specifications we would have to talk back and forth. And um, I can do the inserts as well. So for small runs, there's no, no chance for doing individual dies, but I have more than 50 dies existing. So there's a huge shape of all the inserts which are used on the Bali Williams games and several additional uh, which I have in stock, so I can just take them out of the storage or even uh, run them in the color I have or I need. So I think that's basically all um, I have as a new uh, as news for for this show. Uh, so are there any questions? Did I forget anything? Yes. Yes, basically yes. Well, this is a third party license. Indiana Jones is already prepared. I have the CAD file programmed, the robots are programmed, the art file is already set up, and we are just waiting for the clearance from Disney. And as you can imagine, Disney has lots of other projects to do, and uh, so Indiana Jones licensing is not their major project right now. I'm waiting for a contact from them for like, I don't know, half a year now or something. So this is taking a lot of time. But even Creature took like eight or 10 weeks to till it was clear. So this, this big movie companies take a lot of time to clear individual titles. Uh, yes. Yes, that's the one part of the license for the Williams part. And the, 
additional licenses have to go to the movie companies, depending on which one it is. For, for a creature, it's universal. Planetary. Planetary has it's the it's main, main license. Main, yeah. main pipeline that they, they're asking the studio contacts that they have all the time for approvals. So uh, well, I basically, I have to contact the contacts. Yeah, I, I go straight to the movie companies and uh, talk to them about what I would like to do and what additional license we need. So Planetary just has the Williams license and does not do anything with the third party license. Well, if, if you have any delays, you should ask them for what they advise of. Yeah, we always try to. So we try to uh, through all of the different channels, and uh, but it's very difficult right now for Indiana Jones. They have a new movie coming up. And uh, so that's probably the reason why they delay any promotion or anything with uh, Indiana Jones license. The movie was delayed, so I don't know when we see it. I think it's short of what, 220 right now or something. I don't know. Yes. Yes, of course. Yeah. Okay. This is something I usually go through. So um, the artwork usually didn't fit very well on the older Williams games because they simply didn't care. So what I try to do is that I put the holes in the middle of the artwork. So either I adjust the artwork or the hole, whatever is possible. So there, there are some holes which can't be adjusted, like the flicker, flipper mechanisms, for example. I can't move them, but I can move the holes for the GI lighting very slightly if they are a little bit off. Yeah, so all the holes were screwed and they were all yeah, okay. yeah, so it sounds like the print was maybe completely shifted and that's very easy to fix because the print has to be adjusted to the CAD file uh, on the computer. So when the CAD file is ready, I can just take them and put them above each other and put them where they have to be. So this is basically the adjustment I do all the time. Well, as soon as there are at least two, three people asking me for that, we can run them right away. And it's more, more the de decision what playfields I have access to at this point, and um, I could run them any time. So ru <laughs> yeah, okay, that would be no problem. We, we yeah. could run it right away. Which, which title is it? It's an old one. It's uh, Williams Day 90, 1970. Okay, I don't know. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, it's yeah. no problem. Especially the old games are pretty simple most times, so they are, they are not very hard to uh, reproduce because they have only a little amount of holes and a little amount of uh, dimples and whatever is on them. So basically, I, d I, didn't for uh, I did forget to um, say my playfields are completely drilled and dimpled. So the, the dimples from the bottom and from the top are already there so that it's very easy to s uh, exchange them to the Existing, uh, existing play field and just doesn't take so much time as if you have to mark wherever it has every anything to go. You're welcome. Any other questions? Yes. No. The plywood is a good question. Um, so the plywood we use is custom made. This is not available on the market. Um, it is an, a very strong A-grade birch inner part which is uh, laminated with a very thick hard rock maple from Canada. So this is imported uh, to Europe and the, the birch is probably somewhere out of Europe. Uh, so this wood goes to a very high end tolerance process. So we have very strict restrictions what we want to have the wood look like and what quality it has to be. So there's a big issue with warping we all know about it. This is mainly a, uh, a reason how this wood is made. So I'm not very much involved with that. I just reject the ones which are too much warped. So I don't know how they do it or what they do wrong, but it's the, ma uh, the matter of how they make the wood. And there's a lot of time involved when the, these sheets are manufactured till they can be used because the wood has to sit and rest for a while. So the longer I sit and rest, the better it is to go into production. And it depends on the time of the year when, when the wood 
is put together because between the sheets, it's very difficult for any humidity to g go in or out. So as soon as we seal the surface, then we have a problem with the humidity which is maybe locked in the, surf uh, in the wood. So we have some processes to avoid that we lock in humidity. And um, so this is, this is one of the major tasks to avoid stronger warping. But it's still wood and it will warp all the time. And as soon as the wood rails are attached, then it's reduced to an acceptable amount as long as it is not twisted. If the play field is twisted, then you can't use it at all. And if we have sheets like this, we don't use them. Or if this happens later, which happens very rarely, we destroy the play field and sell them as decoration. So they will not go in the market. And the wood is a major thing about dimpling. So if the surface is very soft, it depends on the wood quality. There are different grades of the maple available. If it's very soft maple, then you have stronger dimples than on the other ones. But wood will always dimple, so it has to. If it, do it doesn't dimple, then we have the ball bouncing everywhere because the steel is harder than wood and it will always damage the wood surface. Even if you take a pinball and throw it on your neighbor's car, you will have a dimple. And we will maybe have new friends. <laughs> okay, any other question? Yes? No, it, uh, we are talking about that to be used, this one on the uh, manufacturing games. Um, this is too new at this point uh, to have them on the current games, but maybe in the next one. Yeah, I know. Yeah, and w it would be much easier and very durable, but the problem... No, it's not a big price difference. The, the plastic material for a plastic set for the sheet is only the smaller cost of it. It's maybe like 10% of the final cost. They didn't have the idea. Why did nobody use the red cells before? Okay, any other questions? Yeah. Not yet. I just started with Gottlieb. So the first ones I did was Hounded House and Black Hole. Yes. Yeah. I have. Yeah. Yeah. I would not uh, be able to use the old process because the old process is a screen print on wood and without any codes at all. And even if we use the screen print without anything on top of it, it doesn't look nice. And um, the, the materials have changed. Uh, over the last years, and there will be another change in Europe. So we have very high restrictions due to the chemicals which are in the in the inks or in the coats, and there's always a new change. So the EU is very restricted with chemicals, especially solvents or other stuff. So there, c there cannot be any lead in the uh, inks anymore. So in the 80s, there were only leaded inks, and they have different behavior than the modern inks. So there's a huge difference, and I think it's simply not worth to try to copy the old system. Um, so the new one is still nice for, for the old games. Would you say that, you know, when you get a thing of lead out of paint, yeah. uh, are the replacements for all that resulting in a better final product from every possible standpoint? Or is it just a matter of getting that stuff out of the final I think it's just a matter of a different system. Um, so the, the inks themselves look different. Um, so the, the leaded ink of the screen print especially has more pigments in it, they look brighter. Um, but the most recent developments of the companies, um, they get around it. So they found a way to use anything without lead. They might be not that durable, but they look the same. Especially the neon colors are a little bit tricky. So the, the neon colors, which were used in the Attack from Mars, for example, we have had some hard time to get them right when we did the first runs because um, in the end of the uh, in 2006 or ten, uh, 2008, uh, it was very difficult to get the, uh, the pigments 
with the right base coat. Today it's very easy. I can buy the pigment itself and put them in a clear base and I have my own neon color. So I can basically mix neon colors in any shape I want. Okay, any other questions? Otherwise, I think I would be done. Okay, great, thank you. You're welcome.